Hey, Sanford fans, welcome into this week's edition of Inside Athletics, presented by Alabama Power. I'm John Mack, who's joined by head baseball coach Tony David as we get a little 2023 baseball season preview. Coach, I appreciate you being here and getting things started this weekend as you guys hit the road, go to Memphis. Yeah, we're excited about it. Uh, uh, nice warm week, and it'll get uh, plenty cold enough to be able to officially start baseball on Friday. 19th overall season for you on staff here at Sanford. Your second as the head coach last year was kind of a little bit of a rebuilding year, but you guys still finish in a tie for second in the regular season. What are you looking for in year two at the helm? Uh, you know, I think from a standpoint of, um, I think all of us really settled in uh, for year two. I mean, that's, um, you know, I was just talking to uh, Memphis's head coach yesterday about the transition from uh, switching schools as a head coach and, and moving and doing all the stuff that's involved with that that I, I couldn't imagine that given that all I did was go six feet over to a different office and in um, and, and, and what was the beginning of a little more chaos in the, in the college world. So I think for us heading into the second year um, of just kind of knowing where we are and what we're doing, uh, not that we didn't know what we were doing, but that transition period was, was a little more interesting than you, than you would like. But um, So I think from a depth standpoint, we went into last year um, with a number of guys that had been on the roster but hadn't done it a lot at this level and, and certainly not in this league. And what you have this year is, is, is a number of returners and then filling in some gaps. And, um, you know, where we feel like we've got some good, um, really good position battles ongoing, uh, which breeds um, a competition and then um, and certainly more depth on the mound when we have all our guys out there. Well, let's start with the rotation. Obviously, that's a strong point for this team. You guys won a lot of series on Saturdays last year behind Jacob Cravey and Michael Ross, both of those guys preseason, also con selections this year. But Sunday was a little bit of an Achilles heel for you guys last year. When you look at a Sunday starter, who's in the mix for that spot? Uh, we've got a couple of guys. Uh, Will Lynch, who took over in that Sunday role at the very end of last season. And, um, you know, we were in the um, the finals of the winner's bracket in the tournament. He got the start and, and gave us a chance. He he left that game uh, when it's up 3-2 to two in the middle innings against Watford. So um, he has, uh, is really throwing well uh, right now. He's in the mix and, and most likely going to be the Sunday guy. And then a transfer, Jake Holyfield, um, is a junior college guy that had a really good fall for us and is throwing well right now. Those two guys will, um, will both uh, see significant time on the weekends, whether it's, um, you know, starting in long relief. But... Um, as we go into this weekend, Will will start on Sunday. And you guys bring back a couple of key late inning arms in the bullpen as well with Carson Hobbs and Alex Goff. Goff's another preseason also kind of guy. Who else is in the mix maybe for some uh, high leverage late inning relief spots? Yeah, both those guys, um, you know, not only had great years last year, but with um, with our depth concerns, we had to be really cognizant of when we used them. You know, we, we, we had to use them in games that we were either winning or, or, or were right there with it and, and couldn't afford to use them when we didn't. So, you know, we feel like we've got more depth there. Uh, ben Pesky is a, is a, is a guy that um, is a junior college guy that's come in that's done really well and had a great fall for us. Um, Brody Westbrook, who was a guy for us last year that pissed a fair amount, will return. Uh, Brody's a guy that uh, it can get up and hot in a flash. Uh, he turns around pretty good. Um, he can start, he could come in mid-relief and extend, or he could come in and get us out of a jam and, and get us another inning. So those are some of the guys there that we, we, we feel like will, will help with the depth. Um, Jacob Newman is, is a guy that saw a significant time on the mound last year as a true freshman that's working his way back. Uh, and Trey Sanders uh, had a really, really good uh, finish of the fall for us and is a guy we expect to help us out. When you look at the lineup, you'll have kind of a mix of some veterans and, and a handful of new faces as well. The infield, mostly intact from last year. You kind of have that dynamic duo up the middle, your middle infielders of uh, Garrett Howe, Garrett Staten, Stephen Klein back at first base. Of course, you've got Dreyer back for another year behind the plate. So really, the, the only hole there from, from last year is third base with Will David gone. What's the plan for third base? Yeah, yeah one thing our guys here every day is, is the importance of defense. And, you know, we knew last year with a, with a lack of depth on the mound and, and, and really kind of all over, any chance we had a success was going to be through a great defensive team. We, we couldn't afford to just be good, and we really were. It was, it was by far the best group that, that we have had and um, with what those guys did out there. So, as you say, you know, Klein's as good as it gets at first base, uh, 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 and, and, and he's back as our, our little Cajun ninja. And we have those two guys in the middle that Garrett and Garrett had a great year last year for us. And then John Anderson came in from Georgia Tech, um, has, um, you know, is a guy that really drives the ball well and will hit in the middle of the order for us in and, and that three, four hole uh, type situation. And then um, he has really handled the third base spot well. That's something he's transitioned to uh, with us. Um, I really wanted to keep the two Garretts in the middle as that duo. And um, 
um, uh, because they're as good as it gets at our level. And um, so I really wanted to keep them there and, and, and see how John took the third base. He's really played well, handles the slow roller, um, can really throw the ball off balance and throw from all different angles. So he's a guy that'll be there. Um, Jaden Davis is an incoming freshman um, that um, has really just swung it from day one for us since his arrival, which is what we expected. And uh, you never know what's going to happen there. And um, he's done a really good job defensively as well. So he's kind of that next one up there. Um, you know, a couple of uh, other freshmen, um, um, uh, Massa and McDonald and, and, and Noto, are kind of round out that core of what is a really good freshman group there in the infield. When you look at the outfield, a lot of guys in the mix for those three spots right now, right? You've got a handful of guys coming back, Mo Hampton, Andrew Bennett, Blake Bortak. But I know you have some new faces in the mix as well for the outfield positions. Yes, uh, you know, we, I, I pulled them aside uh, two days ago after practice and just said, look, right now this is what you want. You, you want competition to make people better and you want the job because you played better than him and you got the job you don't want the job because he's played worse than you right so those guys have really pushed each other and um and that'll be where we have guys moving in and out but case garner who's a guy that was primarily a catcher for us last year um ended up having a shoulder injury and, and missing a significant part of the end of the season uh case has become a great outfielder for us um and is doing well out there and had a monster finish to the fall and has really swung it well so far for us out there um, has done a great job and then a, a junior college transfer josh rodriguez uh, josh has um, come in with some high expectations for us as a guy that can really throw, hit, run, defend, and hit for power, and um, he's really swung it well. So Josh right now here early on will be a guy that will certainly be in there every day. Pretty challenging non-conference schedule this year. We mentioned you're going to Memphis this weekend. You're going to LSU in a couple of weeks, so there's a huge challenge right off the bat. Uh, you've got Alabama coming to the Griff. You've got Auburn at the Hoover Met. You've got Kansas coming here late in the season as well. When you look at the non-conference schedule, what kind of sticks out to you? Yeah, and then a trip to, to, to Mississippi State, right? So obviously the, the thing that I think stands out the most is LSU. That was the case. Uh, even before this past uh, summer when, when a bunch of new arrivals that had done a lot of great things uh, for other people. Um, so, uh, you know, I think they're pretty close to a sellout already all weekend down there. So that'll just be a great environment. Obviously, it's a, it's a great challenge for our guys. Uh, they are the, the overwhelming consensus number one in every poll and, and, and the team that right now uh, the majority of college baseball really expects to be the team to, to win it all. So that'll be great. You know, we, we want to challenge our guys with the schedule. We've got Kansas coming down um, to play here and, and all the other teams. You know, as you mentioned, we go to Southeast Louisiana early on. Um, you know, we had them in last year and we had a good weekend against those guys, but they went on to win their league and, and go to the NCAA tournament, which will be another great environment going down to uh, to Hammond, Louisiana. And then the challenge here this opening weekend against Memphis, um, new coaching staff, a lot of new faces. Uh, we don't know much about them. Um, and there's a lot of unknown certainly every year when you go into the season with with the way rosters are turning over now. Um, but there's some unknown. We want our guys to be challenged. We want that schedule to help us on the recruiting side of things. Um, but it needs to make us better for SOCON play, and, that, and that's the critical part of that. Yeah, speaking of SOCON play, it feels like it's kind of open at the at the top. We know Wofford's bringing back a lot. They're picked to win the league in both the coaches and media poll. You guys are not too far behind them, though, in those preseason polls. I mean, what are your expectations from the rest of the league this season? Yeah, the way it unfolded last year was really those, those four teams, along with Greensboro, right, Wofford, Mercer, and, and us, I think we're kind of – been proudly the top three in the league for, for quite some time and uh, Mercer and us for a while and, and Wofford consistently over the last few years. They do such a great job on, in both places. And then Greensboro, Greensboro had, a, had a great year last year and a great finish to the year um, down the stretch in the regular season and then got hot in the tournament and won it. Um, I believe us and Greensboro were by far the two youngest teams in the league last year. Um, so we both returned a lot of experience. So, you know, right there off the top, you've got those four teams. Um, and somebody's going to pick the winners, and the other three were going to be in the top four. Uh, Western's got a new coaching staff there. Um, there are no really gimme weekends in the league, and that's, I think, what separates it from a lot of places. Uh, the top is, is, is good, um, but, you know, you're not going to roll the ball out there on any given weekend and expect to be able to have success. Coach, appreciate your time. Looking forward to getting this started. All right, we're excited about it. Thank you. Kicking off the season at Memphis this weekend. Home opener is next Tuesday right here at Joe Lee Greenfield against Jacksonville State. That'll do it for this edition of Inside Athletics presented by Alabama Power.